Looking at this game, it was an easy sell for me to try it out. They mix ninjas with androids to create ninja goddamn saviors. If that's not enough to get your attention at least, then might want to restart the video to let it really sink in this time. Alright, let's check this out. In this series, I go over the general controls to the game's main mechanic or mechanics, who or what we use those tools on, and this thing how it all comes together. Bit more in depth, but hey, that's what we do. You play as these ninja saviors who have very unique attacks to themselves, but to use them, you'll need some of this ever filling meter that you constantly decide if it's worth it to use it now for some situational setups, or risk it all by saving it for an explosive payout. It's all up to you. All right, we got our basic attack that's very snappy and has a little combo that ends with the finisher. If the enemy stays up till then anyways, can do this crouch jab combo as well if you need to. And actually while crouching, pressing jump will, will pull out a different option. Kunoichi for example has this forward kunai stab. That's a really good get in move if your basic jabs are too stubby in that moment. We have two jumps, neutral and forward jump have different outcomes. And just by walking up to him, you'll grab. Do a forward or, or back throw to really make some room. Even toss him up to get combos going. Or down for an in-place attack to deal damage, but still keep your position. So yeah, great. We have a few options and you're invulnerable during a throw. So, so pretty useful grab. Onto defenses, we have this block. And just like Shinobi 3, you gotta attack first, then Hold that to finally guard. So it takes a bit of time and setup to actually use this. Gotta preemptively get this going, which means it might not be the best for reactionary on the fly uses mid fight. So it comes in handy though. Also, you can walk back and forward while standing or crouching as you guard in that single direction, which, yep, means your back is exposed. But hey, you can even block during a jump. And O does a block pretty damn well. I remember you have a crouch walk. That just might save you from taking damage. Now looking at our HUD, this thin blue purple meter called armor is our health. And underneath it is the battery gauge, the main focus of the game. So it gradually refills on its own constantly. Landing any basic hits won't make this process any faster from what I can tell. But yeah, with this meter we get to spend it to access some more moves. Just don't get hit too much or get knocked down because you'll completely lose any built up meter you try to stock up. So it's up to you if it's worth the risk to stick it out with the pure basics and save it for later. But yeah, we have some attacks with this meter. So by holding up, it'll have you go into this ready up stance. And attacking with toss out projectiles can even do this midair to get its own version. Okay, during that base combo finisher, you gotta hold up for a powerful version that's invulnerable from what I can tell, moves you forward as well, so you'll dish out more damage and cover more ground too. Pretty good option. Now it's very tricky for this to actually come out and you kind of have to pray it works. Well, that's what I thought at first anyways. So I missed a very important thing in the manual about this ender. It tells you to press up during that final hit. So I was trying to do this up input in such weird timings to get this out and led me to think it was just super inconsistent and not worth the hassle. But after really looking at what's happening, you can just hold up and it'll do the stronger finisher. No correct timing needed, just hold up. But the thing I missed that solved my issues was the little detail of you needing full meter to actually do this. Now I figured I should have been able to do the stronger finisher whenever I can, as long as I had the meter, because I had to do the same hold up and attack setup, just like my projectile attacks. Those didn't require full meter to use, so it made sense, right? Just needed the meter and I should be good to go. So that's what I thought and felt like this meter EX finisher played on those same established rules, but no, need full meter first to use it. Speaking of that, if you manage to save up an entire full meter of battery, neutral A press will do the screen clearing move that empties you out. But 
as cool as it is and how risky and expensive it costs, it does not OTG. So if enemies are floored from a previous hit and just want to have a nice follow up, well you can't, sadly. It'll just sweep over them with no harm. So they need to be on their feet for it to hit them or you'll just be wasting meter. Also, your meter will reset after going through a screen transition. So don't be too stingy with it. Use it when you can, but wisely. When it comes to enemies will fight along the way, there's ladies who are very agile, really go for your legs up close, or jump kick at you from afar after doing some somersaults. Guys in red who will roll out grenades that hits everyone, shoot at you from afar which only affects you, and up close will bunt you with their gun. Big guys who like to jump around, again jump kick, or space you out with a far reaching jab. The slow moving robot who has front armor that deflects all your hits, and they'll actually punish you by grabbing you up close. But you can grab and toss enemies at them, or grab the robot themselves, or just jump behind them to attack their exposed back. And these claw guys who will jab, then spin attack afterwards, or if you're far, will hop two times, then lunge at you. And that's Ninja Warriors Saviors Return of the Warriors once again. <laughs> yeah, Ninja Saviors has some highs and lows for me, with the full meter, screen sweeping explosive attack, not OTGing, even though it covers the ground. The pace killer of no techs to break your fall, so you just got to mash to get up. The overall heavier movement and the little hiccup I had with that EX finisher. But first, this is combat overview and this, this is, <coughs> but it has Robo Ninjas, challenging but fair, great art style. I actually really like the ending. Kind of spoiler, but every robot ninja game pretty much ends the same way, so I like it keeps it going. So there's some things that are fine enough to deal with, but personally, I would have changed some stuff. Still a cool beat em up, just like Beautiful Joe. It all takes place on a single plane. Meter management mechanic tied to your toolset, plus the risk reward of you constantly weighing out your options when to use it or not. Straight to the point, arcadey experience with different stages with their unique hazards to add a nice mix to the fights, then the multiple characters to master their distinct playstyles, two of which you unlock depending on the difficulty. And there's some very distinct differences between them. So all these little nuances help make each run very different. Gotta rethink your approach for each enemy type with what your character has. And then to add enemy groupings into the mix to really put your knowledge to the test. And then add stage hazards on top of that. So character variety is really great. Enemies not too bad themselves. Bosses have their little gimmicks, but large part of the fight is just managing a crowd alongside them. But with the game's risk reward meter management going on, having to decide mid fight what to do is pretty damn cool. And yeah, it's solid. Definitely an old school beat em up with fun ideas. Can't go wrong with that. 